everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful week. We made it to Thursday, we're almost to the weekend. Hang in there. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about my family and how we worship in our family. My older sister told me about these um, radio talks that is on, that are on Mormon Channel. Um, I think it's mormonchannel.org. I will link it below so you guys can check it out. But they're really, really awesome. And there's this one series that is called um, Gospel Solutions for Families. And this, and this particular um, session I was listening to is called Children and Gospel Worship. And I know it's really hard for a lot of families, especially in our situation where um, you've got you and your husband and maybe two or three or four or one little kids and um, it's just it's hard to get into the habit of really good and effective gospel worship and just kind of raising your kids in a way that they will grow up to appreciate um, church and appreciate just the, the things that you're learning there and so that they can grow up to be like well-balanced adults I mean that's the concern of all parents right is that your kids will grow up to be normal and happy and hardworking, those types of things. First of all, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for those of you who didn't know that already. Um, and so we go to church every Sunday. I grew up doing that and it's been a tradition in my family just to do that and so we do that every week. This conversation that I was listening to, there were a couple women talking about their families and things they did or things they've seen other people do with regard to gospel worship and so I'm kind of taking from them and I'm also taking from things we do in our own life. A couple of things that that I gleaned from this talk about church worship is um, consistency. It's really important to have it be a consistent thing so that my kids know if, if it's Sunday, we wake up, we have breakfast, we get ready for church, and we rush off to church. Um, and it's, it's good because they don't have to fight me every single week. One thing that's really hard for me and for probably a lot of families out there is being on time. Another thing they said on this talk is to set the clock back a little bit, start preparing on Saturday instead of Sunday morning, like rushing around, so that you can come to, come to church and be ready to worship in a way that is productive so that I can come into the chapel and, and sit and even if it's just for like literally 30 seconds, have a moment to myself to feel at peace and to feel that connection with God because that's what it's all about. Um, one thing I like to do on Sundays is to play my special Sunday playlist. I like to play church songs or instrumental pieces and classical music so that there's just a, a different type of spirit on Sunday even though we want that spirit all throughout the week. If I, can, if I can make that spirit come into our home a little bit more on Sunday, then I call that a win. Our, our sacrament meeting is with everybody in the chapel, like all of the congregation, a lot like maybe what a mass would be for the Catholics and, and, other, and other groups. It's really difficult to entertain and keep your kids quiet for that long. What Zach and I are hoping to do with our kids is not to just be entertaining them, but to at some point during the hour be engaging them in the service and a lot of times that happens when the sacrament is passed out, the bread and water. We each take a piece of bread and a, a small glass of water um, to help us remember the, the sacrifice of the Savior and His Atonement and also to renew our baptismal covenants. So when that's happening, it's quiet, we sing a song just before that and then it's very quiet and reverent. We usually like to, we'll usually sit our son Porter, he'll sit on one of our laps and we'll read a church book that we brought or we'll just talk about the sacrament and make him kind of calm down for a little bit and be still and sometimes he loves that, sometimes he doesn't. Either way, it's good for him so he's gonna keep doing it with us. Just take a time for them to like realize this isn't just some torture we're putting you through sitting on this big long bench and all your friends are everywhere but you can't play with them. It's not some terrible experience. We want them to realize this is a time to ponder and think and to be reverent. And, and I think it's just really good for little kids, even though it's really, really hard. All of these things are so difficult for families. And I'm not saying this is like an every week thing that we're on time and that we're in a good mindset. Just this last Sunday, we were so frazzled getting into church and I was so upset with myself because I knew I wasn't in, the, in a great mindset to be taught and to be, and to be inspired. So. This is kind of why I'm thinking about it a lot this week, I guess, is because this last Sunday was like nuts. I'm trying to make this quick, but it's turning into a really long video. Um, moving on to other ways to include your children in gospel worship in your home. Prayer is obviously a very good way. Um, we pray a lot in our family. We pray before meals. We pray. We try to pray in the morning before Zach leaves for school. 
um, or after scripture study, we try to pray with the kids before bedtime. So yeah, it's a big part of our lives and I'm, I'm happy that we have been good at that. We weren't always good at that, especially when Porter was younger. It's fun now that Porter and Piper are starting to talk a little bit more because they can help us say the prayers. Again, this is just like a consistency thing. It's one of those things that's not always easy. It's not always fun. The kids sometimes are running around or being crazy or rolling on the ground instead of like kneeling. Again, finding the reason behind prayer. Sure, it's good to, to get them to go through the actions, but to try and let them help them understand why we pray. One of the good examples they gave in this in this talk online was to maybe ask your kids before you pray what they've been thinking about, what they're worried about, what is bothering them, what maybe they could use some help in. Kind of get them thinking about, oh, like these are real things. This isn't just me saying thank you for this and that and then praying for good dreams that night, you know. It's it's real and I believe that it's real and I want my kids to understand the reality of communication with our Heavenly Father and that it's real and that He can give us inspiration when we need it. The last thing I wanted to talk about was scripture study. Scripture study has been really hard for our family. We, Zach and I were really good at reading scriptures together when we were first married. We would read like every day. I don't know at what point that like ended but it, it's been a struggle. It's always a struggle for me personally to read my personal scriptures and just recently we've been better at reading as a family. Mostly I started reading with the kids um, just because we needed more of a routine in the morning and I knew that was obviously a very good thing to be doing with your family in the morning. I always did it with my family. So we have like this big giant Book of Mormon <laughs> that we read every morning and I'll open it with the kids and there's pictures and, and things like that. So that's always fun. They like getting that out just because it's enormous. So there are a couple of different ways you can do scripture study. Again, I'm not an expert. This is just me like giving my thoughts and going off of what the experts did say in this talk. Um, I don't want it to come off that I know everything about these topics. It's just what I'm learning at and I'm, I'm not saying I'm doing all these things perfectly. I'm saying these are the things I'm wanting to work on as well. Again, with consistency, we were really bad last week with scriptures. We were doing better this week. But as we do it more and more, my kids argue less and less every time that we get the scriptures out. One of the great things that they said in this talk was, to, to pray and seek for your own family's personal needs as far as scripture study goes. I'm sure some families use like picture books for scripture stories, for Bible stories, so that their kids can see pictures. I'm sure some families read, just try and get one verse a day. Some families read at night. Some families read in the morning. There's so many different ways to do scripture study. And so a good idea is to just pray about it and ask Heavenly Father, what would be the best and most effective way for our, our little kids to read scriptures? And, and how are we gonna get that into our lives in the in the best way. One thing that we like to do, and they talked about this as well, is to just stop and explain words and stories and people and names and things as you come across them. And it's been really fun with Porter getting a little bit older. He has a pretty good memory, and so he'll remember things. If he sees something that reminds him of, of a scripture story, or if he, you know, meets some little boy who's named Daniel or Benjamin or Joseph or whatever, he he relates it back to the scriptures sometimes and it like it's the best feeling ever when I realize, hey, <laughs> he did listen. One thing that I loved about this talk, and I'll, I'll end it here, is that I'm hoping for my family to always have the principle drive the practice. Um, this is the, their words, I did not come up with that phrase, but the principle, like I want the principle to drive the practice, meaning that I want them to understand that we're reading scriptures and praying and we're going to church because we believe in, that there is a God and that he loves us and we believe he sent his son Jesus Christ to to help us return and live with Heavenly Father again. And not just because it's a nice thing to do or because it's what everyone else is doing. Um, if, they can, if they can understand the principle behind all these little things that we're doing as a family, they'll get more out of it. And that's what this whole talk was about, is improving family worship at home and having it be meaningful. And I'm just really excited to kind of imp implement some of these things within our family. And I hope this is helpful to any of you. I know that there are a lot of families out there who are trying really hard to be worshiping families and and they want their kids to have that in their lives and they just don't know how. And so I hope this is a little bit of a help to those of you who follow my channel. This is a big part of my life and I don't have a lot of this on my channel. I hope it wasn't too overwhelming for, for those of you who follow, but it's a part of who I am, so I hope you can appreciate it. And thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you learned something from this video. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you liked anything or thumbs down because this might rub some people the wrong way. <laughs> um, but we'll see you guys tomorrow.